So, again, we want to thank God for this teaching opportunity, and we want to praise Him for His grace and His mercy. We want to give honor to God and just want to lift up the name of the Lord tonight because he is good. He is good and his mercy endures forever. Um, this evening we want to we want to talk about humility. We want to talk about humility, being humble in the sight of God and realizing that all our help comes from him. It's not about us, it's about the Lord. We got to understand that in him we move, we live, and have our being. We got to understand that, that without the Lord on our side, brothers and sisters, we, we're in a terrible shape. Is he that opened doors? Is he that uh, makes ways out of no way? Is he that gives us the very life that we, you know, live, that we breathe, the air we breathe, you know? And when you come to that conclusion in your life, you know, you... You yield to him and understanding that, you know, the paths he has laid for you, it, his ways are better than our ways. When you come to that conclusion in your life, you understand that, you know, you start living your life more through, you know, a purpose, a purpose. You realize you're not just, you know, living, doing day-to-day -day things until you expire if you will you are doing things on purpose and you realize everything you do everything you do is part of a bigger picture in your life everything you do is part of a bigger picture in your life but you got to first get to that place where you humble yourself and understand it's all about him and it's not about us it's not about us it's all about him okay um there's two types of people in this world. Is is one person, pe one one type of person that think, you know, life revolve around them. You know, if if they're not there, you know, if if they ain't at the party, the party ain't gonna go on. <laughs> if they ain't at church, people ain't having church. You know, if they ain't at the job, the job ain't gonna go on. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Everything goes on without you. You know, because one day you really ain't going to be here. <laughs> Guess what? Life just going to go on. But you got to understand this. Yes, you are important, but everything don't revolve around you. Okay? So, in, in the Bible times, it, there was a group of people called the Pharisees. And they were a re religious group. And they figured as long as, you know, we know the law, as long as we know the law and we, you know, practice certain parts of the law in front of everybody, then we are all right in God's sight. And see, brothers and sisters, don't live your life like that. Don't live your life as a man pleaser. Because I'm going to tell you this, you can't please everybody. I promise you, you can't. <laughs> And for for the for the sake of the ones that um that think everybody love you, don't tell yourself that lie. <laughs> Cause everybody don't love you. Everybody that's smiling in your face do not love you. Okay. Um but uh the Pharisees thought that, you know, we could put on a show and you know just do little things in the sight of a uh, man and make them believe we are so righteous and, and we so this and that. And they look down on other people. You can't look down on other people. Get to the place in your life where you humble yourself to God and you realize everybody is somebody. Okay? Um, so there was another group of people, the low-class citizens, because they didn't enough and they didn't, you know keep the law and do all this, you know, but in other words, when it came to religion, they were on the outside looking in, okay, but they were people too, 
And Jesus, when Jesus came, he tried to bridge it and, and, and help them realize, look, yes, you are in, in church and you know the law and all this, but you got problems. Something still wrong with you where you need God. And so, yes, you may be a publican and you standing on the outside and you ain't got it all together. But guess what? God still loves you and you need God, too. And I'm here, Jesus saying, I'm here for both of y'all, for everybody. All right. So we can't look down on one person and then, you know, ain't we higher than anybody else. We got to understand that everybody is somebody. Humble yourself, brothers and sisters. Stay humble. Stay humble. All right, so we're going to be in a, a story in uh, Luke chapter number 18. Luke chapter 18. I'm going to begin reading that verse number 9. Luke 18, beginning at verse number 9. It says, and... And he spoke a parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed this with himself, God, I thank thee that I'm not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. All right, so we're going to look at this parable this evening. Again, we're talking about humility. We're talking about being humble. We're talking about understanding that. God is God. God is the only perfect one. God is the one we need. God is our source. We are imperfect beings. All right. We need the Lord more than we really think we do. And brothers and sisters, listen, don't let, don't let riches, don't let, um, uh, popularity, don't let success go to your head. Okay, just because you have these things, listen, if it wasn't not if it wasn't for the Lord keeping you, you could lose your mind overnight. Now all this popularity, you ain't popular no more. Now all these riches, you don't even know you got no money when you lose your mind. You know. So you gotta stay humble to God and understand He's in control. So here, um, Jesus, Jesus told this story. I mean, you want to put a lesson out there. He wanted to get the people a, a spiritual principle, a spiritual lesson out of a story. Okay. And he spoke this, this story, this parable, um, to, to really teach those who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised other people. Now, um, yes. Born again believers, saints of God, children of the Most High, all right, Holy Ghost filled people, all right. We are supposed to live our lives at a different standard. Yes, we supposed to the the whole a different standard in our life of holiness and righteousness. But we don't we don't get saved to think we better than somebody else. Other people. And how they live their lives, you know, if you're saved and, and there's unsaved people, they are not your standard. Jesus Christ is our standard. We don't say, oh, oh, they not holy. They ain't going to go to church like me. They don't know the Bible like me. You know, I, I can't, I, I'm, I'm better than them. They ain't in my class. But don't forget, at some point in your life, <laughs> 
the the people you looking down on saying they in a certain class, you was in that class too. And matter of fact, Jesus told his parable to show them you worse off than them with that type of attitude. <laughs> you worse off, you know, knowing better, but not doing better, not thinking better. Okay. Jesus told this, this parable, he, it, it says to, to, um, to those which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised other people. All right. That's not, that's not, um, when it comes to, um, doing the will of our God, we don't despise other people. And we understand if we, if we are righteous, it comes by the grace of God. We are righteous because of his grace. We are not righteous on our own. All right. So the, the story says that two men went up into the, the temple to pray, which lets me know you can't judge people. The Bible says, judge not that you be not judged. It says, two men went into the temple to pray. So that lets me know, you know, yes, there are, there are church folks that pray, but there are also people that are struggling praying. There are also people that don't fully understand God and his ways and, and how he does things and and what his will is for them, they're praying too. We can't judge them just because, you know, they don't know when to stand up, stand up and sit down, or they don't know the, the, the apostles creed. They don't know the, the benediction, what that means. They, they don't know all this church lingo, but guess what? They are praying to the same God you are. Ain't that so? And God done saved us. He done revealed this new way of life to us. He done made it. He done made himself manifest to us. We know the mysteries of the kingdom. They don't know, but they know there's a God somewhere, but they don't fully understand the ways and, and, and how God and how to be saved and what baptism means and, you know, what it means to repent. They don't fully understand, but guess what? There are people like that that's out there praying. They're praying to God and God, you know, God will send us their way to enlighten them, to bring them closer to the Lord that they may understand. But if we have this attitude of this Pharisee that, you know, oh, he a publican, what he doing in the church? If, if you got that kind of attitude, you ain't helping nobody find Christ. Matter of fact, you pushing them away and you better be careful about putting, pushing people Away from God. The Bible says it's better that a millstone be hung around your neck and you be thrown into the sea than you turn one of these little ones away from God. Be careful. Amen. We're supposed to be drawing people. We the light of the world. We're supposed to be drawing people. All right. So two men went to uh, into the temple to pray. That let me know every time I go in the doors of a church, there are two different kind of people in there. They may be human beings. I ain't talking about man or woman. I'm talking about somebody that think it's all about them. I'm talking about somebody that, that stand in the place of God, you know, and, and some of us lift these pastors up higher than God. Don't lift your pastor up higher than God. He ain't God. She ain't God. Honor them, respect them, yes. You know, listen to them because they are the mouthpiece of God. Believe in them that they, you know, that they are sent, but they are not God. All right. And I, you know, I push, I push that glory away because I realize God, you know, God will show you that they ain't God. So don't put me on a pedestal. Amen. Don't put me up there because I realize if I stay humble, God will exalt me. All right. So there are two type of people in the church. At one point when I was young in, in, in the ministry and a babe in Christ and all that, I thought everybody in the church was saved. <laughs> but I got a rude awakening when I, when I really saw how people really are. All right. 
And you got Pharisees in the church and you got publicans in the church. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Two men went into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other one was a publican. You got religious people in the church and you got people that's not so religious in the church, but they are trying. They trying to find God. How many of y'all out there trying to find God? How many of y'all, you know, you, you, you know to say, our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day thy daily bread. You, how many of y'all know that, that prayer? All right. But then you you also cuss somebody out. But then you'll go back and say, oh, Lord, forgive me. Have mercy, Lord. Help me. Help me with my mouth. <laughs> I, I can't judge you. I cannot judge you. <laughs> there's, there's a shirt people like to wear now. It's, it's several of them kind of funny. One of them says, try God, not me. <laughs> He trying. You 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 at least you you know where you, you you know you know God is there. You know God is there. You know God is there. And you you trying, you trying. All you need is that that breakthrough. All you need is is God to just lift you over that threshold. You know, to the point where you just completely surrender your life. You you just have not completely surrendered yet. But you 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 know, you you in church you you trying to get to, to the Lord. You're trying to get to that place where he'll accept you. And, get, and let me tell you something. You ain't got to do nothing special for the Lord to accept you, as we're going to see in this, this story tonight. You ain't got to do nothing magical for the Lord to accept you. All you got to do is be real. Be real with yourself. Be real with God and humble yourself to him. Sincerely realize it, it's about him. That's where the power comes through God. It ain't about your sins and, and, and what wrong you are doing. God will accept you if you repent. If you honestly and truly say, Lord, have mercy on me. Help me, Lord. And there's plenty of people out there saying that. Help me, Lord. But then the enemy started drawing you back with temptation, drawing you back with troubles and, 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 and you know, deceiving you and, and distracting you with the things of this world he's steady drawing you and you it seems like you just can't get to that place so what you need to do is, is humble yourself and i'm gonna tell you what i'm gonna tell you where it really is those of you who are really praying and you just it's just like you you have not found god in that place of power yet you, it, it's like you have not completely surrendered yet i'm gonna tell you when i'm gonna tell you when you can find him that that place when you can humbly find him. All right. It's it's that time when, when God won't allow you to sleep at night. It's that time when you are up by yourself in the midnight hour. It's something about that midnight hour. When you are up and everybody else asleep, you can't find nobody else to talk to, and, and you you roll around that bed all all you want, you just cannot go back to sleep. All right, NyQuil won't put you back to sleep. <laughs> Jack Daniel won't put you to sleep. <laughs> All right, but in that midnight hour, you start talking to God. You start talking to him. And, and you you don't focus on nothing else. You start talking to the Lord. And what, what will happen is, because ain't nothing else going on, it's just you and God. In the midnight hour, it's just you and God. You might end up hearing his voice just like you hear mine. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. He'll speak to you. He'll minister to you. And he'll tell you exactly what you need to do. And at that point, all right, at that point, you just need to, to hear him. Not just hear his voice audibly. You at that point you will you will hear him and 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 understand what he wants you to do. It, it'll click and say, oh. That's what you want me to do. That's what you need me to do. And and once you are obedient to it, it's on then. <laughs> it's on. From there, you'll start hungering and thirsting after his righteousness. You'll hunger and thirst after, 
after his righteousness. And you will want more of him because you know his ways are now better than your ways. You will realize what I'm doing for him, I'm being obedient to him and, and walking in his ways now is working more for me in my life than what I was doing, you know, pre prior to, you know, hearing his voice. All right. So I want to challenge you. Okay. Don't let nobody tell you, you got it or you don't. They don't know what you got. They don't know what you got. They ain't God. Yes, you you may have a, a, a somebody with a, a discerning spirit. That's a gift from God. But ultimately, you, you don't know what's going on inside nobody's heart. That's why we should not judge one another. So these two men went up to pray, the Pharisee and the publican. The Pharisee, listen at his prayer. He stood and prayed this with himself, by himself, like, get away from me. You know, don't stand in my area. You know, it wasn't no pandemic going on in, in Luke chapter number 18, but he like, make sure you stand six feet away from me while I'm praying. Okay. This is my area. <laughs> oh Lord. In other words, y'all ain't, y'all ain't in my religious class. Lord hammer. Y'all excuse me. I'm thirsty tonight. Um, I'm, I'm holy right now. I'm praying. So y'all stay away from me. Okay. He said, God, I thank thee, which is good. You're supposed to thank the Lord. <laughs> You're supposed to give God thanks. The Bible say in everything, give thanks. Thank you, Lord. That's good. So what was wrong with this Pharisee? Let's, let's read. I thank you, Lord, that I'm not as other men are. That's where you went wrong, brother. <laughs> Your prayer took a wrong turn right there. You comparing yourself to other people and you, you make it seem like you better than everybody else. Don't come near me, you adulterers. Don't come near me, you extortioners. Don't come near me, you publican. You don't deserve to be at my level. You ain't, you don't deserve to be in my space. Like, who is you? Or for the grammatically correct, who are you? <laughs> you ain't, your space don't matter. If it wasn't for God, you wouldn't have no space to be in. He said, I thank you, Lord, that I'm not as other men are. They are not your standard. So, which lets me know, you know, by thinking you better than everybody else, that lets me know. And this, this, the point, this is one of the points that Jesus is trying to make known. You are worse off than the people you said you, you glad you ain't like. <laughs> you got a problem. And I, you know, like I said, I don't judge people, but I don't like being around people that think they better than somebody else. Yeah, you can sing or yeah, you can preach, but that don't make you better than nobody else. Not when it comes to God. Not, you know, in, in the world, that may put you on a, in, in a different, uh, on a different plane than everybody else. You know, yeah, get your reward. Get your award or whatever. Oscar or Emmy, yeah, you, you on a different level. Yeah, bravo, bravo, great, great job. But when it comes to the household of faith, there are no big eyes and little you. We all in the body of Christ working this thing together, and there's one head, and that's Jesus Christ. So it, it ain't for us to say, oh, I'm holier than thou. The Bible says that, that, that the religious people in, in, in Isaiah they, they started saying about other people, oh, we are holier than thou. And God say, y'all like a smoke in my nose. Y'all, y'all make my face frown up. <laughs> I, I'm just sick of, I'm so sick of y'all. <laughs> Can you imagine God saying that? I'm so sick of y'all. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, listen. 
if if God if God strengthens you and gives you the strength, you know, to overcome adultery and drinking and smoking and drugs and you know all these unrighteous things. If He gives you the power to overcome, praise the Lord. It ain't for you to glory in that like you better than everybody else. It is actually for you to now go back and get those who are subject to those things and can't break free on them on the on them on their own. It's for you to go back and, and let them know there is a better way. So the Pharisee, his prayer was simply this. I'm in the church. And Lord, I thank you that I ain't like other people. That's a sad life. Because guess what? At some point, somebody going to be better than you. And now you sitting there looking silly, like jealous, like, oh, I, I got to do something to make them look bad. And that's all they did. Listen, if you study the Bible and, and look at how the Pharisees operated, they always came up with a strategy on how to undercut Jesus because Jesus was gaining more fame than they were. <laughs> and that's just how self-righteous people are. If they find out somebody is doing something better than they are, they're going to find try to find a way to get rid of them. And brothers and sisters in Christ, listen, don't you worry about people and how they do underhanded things to get rid of you. That just lets you know if you got a hater, that number one, that means they looking at you. They watching you. Number two, you doing something great because they now they want to get rid of you. Number three, don't stop. Continue to do greatness because you ain't got nowhere to go but higher. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So the Pharisees uh, put himself higher than other people. I thank you, Lord, that I'm not as other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Ain't that something to say? How you think that how you think that man feel? The publican now. We're gonna shift to the publican because I want to talk about him. How you think that made him feel? You know, he know he a publican. He know he, you know, is is not doing the things that God want him to do like God may want him to do it. He know he fails and falls and comes short of the glory of God. He knows that. But how do you think that made him feel to know that, Lord, I'm trying. I'm here at the altar, God. I, I don't know no other help. I don't know what else to do with my life, God. But here I am. I'm trying. But here's this religious man making me feel worse than what I really am. How you think that man feel? He probably don't even want to come back to the temple to pray no more. And that's a bad thing for church folk to make people feel like that. And see, as a pastor, I cannot tolerate that. If I know, if I know somebody came to our assembly and I know somebody made somebody feel like that, I will, I will really approach them and be like, Look, we can't we can't live that kind of life. We accept anybody in our church because we are not the judge. We are not the judge. If they if they have look, the Bible said no man can come to the Father except the Spirit of God draw him. If if somebody is trying to come to to Christ, that means God is drawing them. That means God is speaking. They, that means they, you know, they may be at their wits end. I don't know what else to do. I'm going to try God. Praise the Lord. That's exactly where we want them at. I don't care how they dress. I don't care what they smell like. I don't care what they did last night or even before they came to church. I don't care about none of that. But to see somebody at the altar, at least praying or saying, Pastor, pray for me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I can't be like this Pharisee. Uh, I, I'm, we don't allow people like that in our church. When You can't come down to the altar looking like that. <laughs> I don't know what church y'all used to, but 
<laughs> if they treat you like that at the church you've been to, come to St. Peter. Please come. Because we love you. Okay? And I guarantee you, God will work a work in you. That's the kind of people God want to work in. Somebody that's humble. Not no uppity person and self-righteous. Alright? Because soon as they don't, don't go to a self-righteous person way, they're going to want to quit. They're going to want to Take that kickball and go home. <laughs> yeah, I ain't playing my kickball no more. But God needs some humble people that know, look, I'm not perfect. But Lord, if you work through me, if you work in me, if you clean me up, Lord, I do your will. That's what God needs. God needs somebody that's serious and, 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 and honest and sincere. That's what God needs. And then when, when God really cleans somebody up, they won't turn their back on God. They'll be committed. They won't, they won't go backward. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. Hallelujah. See, I know where God has brought me from. That's why I'm committed to the Lord. I'm committed to him. I got to do, to do God's work because I know it, what the Lord has brought me from. All right. So this man was, this Pharisee, this church man was at the, the altar, at God's altar. Don't you know God can strike you down for coming <laughs> coming to his altar like that? Back, you know, back in the Old Testament days, you just didn't come to the altar any kind of way. You just, you know, you ain't play coming to God's altar. That was a serious place. They made sacrifices on the altar. And at the altar of God, it's just like a symbol of you making a sacrifice, a self-sacrifice at the altar of God. You don't play with stuff like that. But nowadays, people play with God so much and don't know the trouble they standing up, they, they, they bringing upon themselves playing around with God. It was a time when I was younger, you know, we was taught to respect God, you know, respect the dead, respect elders. We was taught to respect, okay? You know, you ain't, you, you ain't point at a graveyard, your finger might fall off. <laughs> don't disrespect respect the dead, okay? And, you know, when we, when we were walk, you know, we were walking down to the swimming pool or something, we walked by a church. We're at, you know, me understanding I wasn't right with God. I wouldn't walk on the same side as the church. And people might say, ah, oh, that, that's too far. But that was just my mentality. I didn't play with God because I, I was taught that was holy ground. You just don't go up in God's house or on his ground and, and, and act in any kind of way. And see, this man up in the church, he done got used to it. He done got used to it to the point where God really ain't mean nothing to him. It was all about him. The world revolved around him. He ain't had no respect for God and his altar and his kingdom or none of that. God's people, none of that. It was all about him. But God wants us to be humble and understand he is to be worshipped. He is to be praised. He is getting all the glory, honor. <laughs> he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We should bow down before the Lord. <laughs> and we making all these requests. Yes, yes, we should make, make our requests known. But we at first humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. And before we make all these requests, we should worship him. Honor him as God. That's why Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed, holy is your name. Worship the name of God before you go into, Oh Lord, I need this, I want this, give me this, give me that. All right, so they were standing there praying. He said, the, the Pharisee went on, I fast twice in the week, I give tithes of all I, that I possess. Look what I do, God. Look what I do. Well, you might well go ahead and eat your food because God ain't, he ain't, he ain't pleased with what you're doing. <laughs> you fast twice a week. It's all about you. You ain't gave me glory not one time. And then you putting out other people because they ain't on your level. You might well eat your food. You just, just say you're on a diet. If you're on a diet, just say that. Because your fasting don't mean much to me right now. <laughs> oh, Lord. I tithe, I tithe 
uh, I give tithes of all I possess. You might well put that money in savings. Because your tithe really isn't it, it, it. Thank you for the money you give me, but your tithing really don't matter to me right now. That's what God is telling him. Because if you're doing it just to show, you ain't done nothing. Keep your money. Jesus told him, uh, he, he told his disciples, he said, look, all these people giving money. But then there's one widow brought in the last penny she had and put it in the basket. I tell you, she was more blessed than all the rest of them. Why? Because she gave out of faith. Everybody else just going up there, look how much I'm tossing in the basket. That's not what giving is all about. It's a faith wall. It's, it's believing that if you, you give as God told you to give, he will bless you in return. He will not tell you to give and then you running around here eating that poking beans and weenies, which poking beans and weenies do sound good right now, especially with some fried chicken and some light bread. But I'm just saying, God is not going to tell you to give and then you turn around and be suffering. That's not how God operates. If you give by faith, then he going to multiply and, and give back to you. You won't go lacking. <laughs> huh. But if you give, if you give just for it to be a show, you might well keep your money. Just keep it. Buy a new suit or something. Because God is not pleased with what you're giving. This man, God is not pleased with your actions. Because you are giving it out of boasting, a boasting spirit, a bragging spirit, or you know, look what I can do instead of giving by faith as a result of God's command. All right. So then it shifts. He shifts. He says the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much his eyes toward heaven, but smote himself on the breast, saying, God be merciful to me a sinner. Can you, can you picture these two people standing at the altar praying? He don't care who around him. Matter of fact, he feels, and, and this is how sin should make us feel. Sin should make us feel bad. Not because you got caught doing it. Not because of the consequences and repercussions that you experience as a result of doing it. But because you have wronged God. Because you have done something against the very commandment of God. You should feel bad. You should feel shame. Not because of how people look at you, you know, as a result of your sin, but because you know God is not pleased with your sin. And if you continue in your sin, you will not live, uh, you will not inherit eternal life. That's, that's what it's all about. That's why we repent of our sin and, and draw near to God. It ain't, a, it ain't about what man say about you. Because the, the truth be told, you can be saved and you still fall short of God's glory. You still going to sin. You still going to fall to temptation. But the Bible says a just man will fall seven times, but the Lord will lift him back up again. Because they are sincere. But this man, he stood away from everybody. He didn't feel worthy to be in this assembly. But he was there because he knew he needed God. He was a publican, the lowest of the low as it, come, as it pertains to social standard. He felt that low at this hour, but at least he was at the temple praying and his prayer, you know, he didn't, he, he, he didn't think he was worthy. He came to God unworthy and, and listen, holiness will make a sinner feel unworthy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. The Pharisee thought he was worthy because of the good things he'd done and because he wasn't like other people. In other words, he was putting himself up there where God is. He, he felt like he was worthy. Brother, you still sinning, a sinner. It's still something you got going on because man don't know it. You still doing something at your own house or in the dark or in the closet or when people ain't watching you. You still got something going on. Instead of coming to God's altar talking about what, what you doing, you know, be honest with God. Be real with God and say, Lord, help me to be stronger and wiser. Help me to be holy and righteous. 
But this man, this, the publican, he came to God and he wouldn't even, the Bible said he wouldn't even look towards heaven. He bowed before God. He felt unworthy because he knew he had done wrong in the sight of God. He knew his lifestyle didn't match the holy lifestyle of God. And see, when, when God is your standard, you feel unworthy. When God is, see, Isaiah put it like this, I believe in Isaiah chapter 6. He saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple and the angel was was flying around him crying holy 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 lord god almighty heaven and earth are full of your glory they were praising god he saw this vision of the holiness and pureness of almighty god and and isaiah's response was woe is me for i'm a sinner undone <laughs> Lord have mercy. How would you know you're a sinner undone? Because now I see the true standard of holiness. I'm in the presence of God. I don't belong in this holy place because I'm a filthy sinner. So that's how this man felt. I'm in the presence of God. I'm in God's holy temple. Lord, I don't even feel worthy to be here because I know I've been wrong. But that's the mercy of God. Listen, he said his prayer wasn't com comparing himself to other people. Lord, I ain't like this Pharisee. I, I can't be as righteous and, and good as he is. I can't tithe all my money and, and do everything he do. Listen at his prayer. He wasn't comparing himself to nobody else. He was just basking in the presence of God. Lord, I'm in your presence. I'm sorry. And this was his prayer. God be merciful to me, a sinner. Lord have mercy. In other words, he he was saying, just like I say all the time, Lord have mercy on me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But whose prayer was answered? Who was justified as a result of their prayer? All he said was, God be merciful to me, a sinner. He ain't go on to this long prayer, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, and, and Lord this, and, and Lord that. He ain't going to old elaborate prayer. He was just sincere and humble before the mighty king. Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Lord, if you, if you can hear my cry, Lord, Look beyond my faults at this hour and have mercy on me. If anybody could have mercy, if anybody could see my need at this hour, God, see me and know that I need you right now, God. Have mercy on me. Have you ever been in a vulnerable state in your life? You know, if you've ever been sick and know you can't heal yourself, your prayer ain't, oh, I'm glad I ain't like these other people. No, you saying, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, if it's your will, keep me in this world. But I need you to heal me, God. Have mercy on me. Have you ever been uh, falsely accused or you might have been rightly accused in a courtroom and, and you want God to have mercy on you because you feel like now, Lord, I want to do your will. I didn't want to do that, Lord. It was a mistake, Lord. I'm, I'm truly and wholeheartedly sorry. Lord, be my lawyer at this hour. Have mercy on me and I'll do your blessed will. <laughs> Sometimes God allow you to get to a, a vulnerable state in your life just to get to this humble place of Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, I thank you today. Jesus said this. Remember, he was trying to um, teach them a lesson. Jesus said, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. <laughs> all he, all he was was humble. All he was was sincere. All he was was a, a sinner that needed a, a, a holy God at that hour. And he went down to his house justified. Why? Because he didn't put himself in a holy place. He put himself in a, in a sinner's place, a repentant sinner's place, and God justified him. The other man was justified, but he, he was justified by man. 
Man say, okay, you right. You, oh, you so righteous. That's your reward. But I don't care what man say about me. It's, it's people that can say what they want to say about me. But I want to hear God say, well done. I want to hear God say that. I want to be justified in the sight of God to the place where, like it says in Romans, if God be for us, who can be against us? There is therefore no more condemnation, hallelujah, to them that are in Christ Jesus. So this sinner, this publican, he went down to his house justified. That, that, that Pharisee could no longer condemn him because now he is justified in the sight of God. That's good news tonight. There's so many of us worrying about what people say because we ain't on their standard. We ain't as, as churchy as they are. Yeah, you know, get right with God, yes. Grow in grace and knowledge, yes. Don't stay in the place where you are. God got great things for you. But in the place where you are, don't feel inferior when you come around other people. God loves you just like he loves everybody else. He loves you just like he loves you just like he loves everybody else. And you better believe that. You better know that. Can't nobody put you in no heaven or hell. Quit worrying about what people say about you. Live your life as, as it pertains to what God has for you. His plan for your life. And where it starts, like this publican, you got to humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. Draw near to him and he'll draw near to you. Cast your cares upon him because he cares about you. <laughs> That's where it starts, at humility. Listen to what he said, and then we're going to leave this thing alone. He said, for everyone that exalts himself shall be abased or brought low, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. <laughs> Jesus said, don't, don't go in the church and and, and choose the chiefest seats in there, you're going to be embarrassed because somebody more important than you going to come in and tell you, sit down. Um, or can you move, sir? Um, this, this bishop, is, is, he's come. He, he needs to sit here. Can you please move? <laughs> he exalted yourself. Now you being humble. Now you being a base. Move out the way and let somebody more important than you come. But see, when you humble yourself to start with knowing that God is in control, when you humble yourself to start with, somebody will notice you and, and, and you sitting in the back and somebody will notice you and they'll tell you, come on up. Come on up and sit in this place. In other words, when you are humble, you will be exalted by God. <laughs> I've seen it so many times. So many times, people trying to put themselves in a certain place and get embarrassed. Like, you don't belong here. Move. We don't want you here. <laughs> but then somebody who, somebody who's not trying to please man or trying to, you know, gain the public's eye, they're just in the background, but they're doing their work sincerely and honestly, and they got integrity, and somebody noticed them, and they bring them up. And they bring them up and honor them. I done seen it. I done seen it. I done seen it in my own life. <laughs> so, praise the Lord, brothers and sisters in Christ. Listen, God is your standard. His holiness is your standard. Not man. Don't worry about what they say about you. All right? Because quite honestly, they're in the same boat you in. They need the Lord just like you do. And so, you go to God on your own accord you know you pray to god sincerely humble yourself to him and he'll exalt you in due time all right y'all have a good evening a great evening and remember that i love you but more importantly god loves you much much more than i y'all have a blessed evening